So the idea about the formative feedback is there are several ways to, to get feedback from students. And one of the easiest ways, and the ones that I really like, is an anonymous survey. And you can set it up so that it's anonymous, or you can set it up so that it's they have to log in through Google, UW WISC ID, mm -hmm. um, which will make them much less willing to say anything negative about, <laughs> about it. But there's also a third of which I've now experimented with, but should work in theory, where at the end of the um, at the end of the survey, you embed a, a link to another survey that gives them um, credit. So they have to take the one survey, complete it, in order to get to the next survey where they get credit. So the first survey is still totally anonymous, but the second survey indicates that they've seen it, and so they get Did credit. Did they receive for that. an email that they completed it? Because that's actually how at another campus that's what they ended up doing with us. You have to send and instruct your completion email. Takeaway. Okay. That, that's I, super smart. <laughs> that's just what the instructor had did. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Because then it was still anonymous, but you didn't know which answers were that mm -hmm. stupid. But they got credit by And then they just this, forwarded that email to yeah, the Yeah, they just instructor. forwarded the completion email. I mean, it's one more step for the instructor yeah. to complete, but it's better than... It's I better guess. than nothing. Yeah. There's, I mean, there is the issue of the time stamp. So that, right. but though you could press the time stamp. Oh, uh, right. I mean, if, 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 a, if I see that... It, Student X completed this at 2.35, and at 2.37 I got an email from Joe, and I pretty much know that's Joe. But it's going to be the same with, I mean, you could figure that out in a second survey. Both surveys are going to have a timestamp anyway, so you could still, that's if you point. really wanted to know who said something, like, yeah. you couldn't still track it down, but. Probably. Anyway, but that's a cool way to do it. And students also like to know that the instructor now know that they completed it as well, mm -hmm. so I think it's a good way of. Mm -hmm. Giving the students some reassurance. Yeah, yeah. I, I did send you an email and mm -hmm. you got it. So right. Did you get my file? Did you get my right. file? <laughs> you confirmed that you got it. Yeah. So I want to make sure that I get that two points. <laughs> um, so yeah, for the formative feedback, the, the big thing is using the design thinking framework. And then within that, I, I threw in this um, backwards design element. But knowing your students is so important. Yeah and learning, what can you do to learn about your students? Um, I think you could probably do formative feedback. Uh, well, also, and I have this one. Um, in sort of, as a muddiest point, if you, each week or each day mm -hmm. after class that night, you could say, <coughs> here's today's survey. We tried to cover this, this, and this in class. And we wanted you to learn that this leads to this and this. I mean, it's a way for you as an instructor to review what it was that you wanted them to get out of it, and for them to say, oh, I got that, or I did not get that. Um, but regardless of whether they got it or didn't get it in class, here they got it here. Now they got it because you just reviewed the formative feedback here. So it's, it's another impression that you can, it's another way for the students to see the content. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how, how frequently are you um, suggesting you doing this type of formative feedback? Is it once a week? Is it every couple of weeks? So when you're done with a certain mod with I, a module? I think so. It so much depends on the topic and the instructor and the community of the class. Mm -hmm. I think it could be something that, so a lot of instructors will do th things where they just hand out a three by five card at the end, mm -hmm. of the, of the end of the class and they say, on your way out, right, or before you leave, write down the muddiest point, mm -hmm. and on your way out, put it in the basket, or whatever, mm -hmm. and that way they can go through and they can get that sort of formative feedback. This is another way of doing that. Okay. Um, in cognitive science, and looking at the learning sciences, the, the idea of distributed learning is that we don't just have something in, in the class period and then we're done with it, mm -hmm. but as many times as we can revisit that material with some space in between, mm -hmm. it, it in, increases the chances that it's going to stay right. in the heads because it's, it's the retrench, it's the retrieval right. more than more than the retention. So my suggestion for formative for that muddiest point is not at the end of the semester or end of the class, uh -huh. and not at the end of the semester when it's too late, right. Right. but like that night. Um, when I did this for my CP 125 class, which I think was this one, um, I had formative feedback three times a semester, okay. where I was like, okay. on week one, we did this, right. and I wanted you to do this. Okay. On week two, we did this, and I wanted you to learn this. Okay. Um, so it was just three times a semester, and then okay. at the very end of the semester, I did sort of a, 
yeah. overall review, are things still sticking from week okay. one? Okay. Do you think there's a benefit from using Google Forms over, say, Qualtrics or the survey tool or ACES? I do. The more I use it, the more I think there's a benefit. Um, the more I use Qualtrics as a designing surveys in it, the more I recognize that Google is much easier. Yes. There's a lot of funny things. You do a lot more with Qualtrics. And if I were a Qualtrics expert... I'm not a Qualtrics or ASIS user, but I know our assessment person uses both. And, and, and she's doing formative assessment, which was why I asked what you're doing. I think if somebody is really good at those tools, <coughs> they should use the tool okay. that gives them the most power. I think that for somebody who's just delving into this, yeah. Qualtrics, it, it even sounds kind of in, intimidating. <laughs> <Yeah. Qualtrics. laughs> right, so it, it, it can be. Um, and Google Forms is just, it's easy and it's simple and it's so clean looking that it's almost mm -hmm. too clean looking, but it's just, it's not intimidating at all. Do you have any like tips or suggestions on using it? Like I have used it a couple times, but like what do you normally do? Is there something that you don't do every time? Like you just didn't work? I do a quantitative question and I will follow it up with the other or other th you know things that you can okay. uh, please explain. And that way I can get data like, oh, my last example of this. Well, so I'll get data, I'll get the graphic very easy to see for me to be like, oh, generally good, right? You know, the positives over the negatives, so positive. Um, or more people want to learn this than this, or that kind of thing, so it's very visible for me. But then I will also, farther down, um, say, what was it that stuck out the most, and get some, give them an opportunity to say, you know, I really didn't get this, and I, I thought it was this, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that qualitative aspect is not as quantitatively useful. You know, it might just be an outlier, but it might also be that seven people say, yeah, I didn't get this part, and I didn't get this part, and mm -hmm. but it'll give me more insight than just the blue bar as to why they didn't get it. So yeah. I almost always match a number question with a word question. Yeah, so you get some explanation. And they never, you know, <coughs> they don't always fill that out. The ones who don't care might just click a button and move on because they got other stuff to do. But the ones who do care, um, they'll. I frame it as. Hey, I'm trying this thing. Might work, might not work. I, I get to do this a lot because of my role as a sort of educational technology mm -hmm. curriculum instruction type person. Where I'm like, I'm going to try this. I need to enlist you as sort of my lab, you know, co-conspirators. <laughs> you are going to be the people that I'm going to test on. So I need your help doing this. It's a psychology experiment, right? So your honest feedback is helpful, mm -hmm. but it affects the people next year, and it'll affect what I'm doing next week as well. Mm -hmm. And so if I can enlist them as um, participants rather than as something that's I don't care about, um, I get I get greater responses. I find that, that using that approach is very helpful because students then feel like, I want to help the, the, the next class. I want to help the, the incoming yeah. students because there are things that I didn't <laughs> like and I don't want. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so they really get into it with the goal of helping yeah. um, in that sense. So I, I like that using that approach. So they feel like there's some altruism here. I'm helping them. Yeah, and you're in the right discipline for that as well. So <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't know if that would work in business. <laughs> right? Maybe. Um, so that's the form. And, uh, we did, and we did a session on formative feedback two weeks ago using Google Forms. So that's online. The video for that, I think, is online. Okay. But that's worth interested in looking at that. Um, I would also ask about the YouTube. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like this, and I kind of want to use this. Actually, I do want to use this in my online communities of practice that I support. Man, for an online course, that would be so powerful. Yeah, and I was also going to ask, is there a reason to not use Kaltura or YouTube, or are you just you just chose YouTube out of random? I chose YouTube because everybody knows YouTube and I don't have to teach them Kaltura. And YouTube had, I don't know if it still does actually, um, but it had one button that says webcam and they would press the button mm -hmm. and they Talk. they were going and they were on their way. Now, when I gave this assignment, you know, they didn't all choose that. This, this guy went into iMovie and did the whole 
yeah. credits and titles and <laughs> theme song and all that sort of stuff. Nice. But then there are other people who just did, you know, the one that I did was, um, because I, I try to do all the assignments to show them that doable. it's doable, I'm not asking you to do something that's impossible. And the one that I did, I did, um, this is actually the making of, so uh, I did it, but then as I did it, I had another, my phone over here <laughs> beforehand, you know, sort of enveloping it. And so I said, okay, so here's how I'm gonna do this. And the phone, you know, caught the screen, I was like, pressing this button and adjusting the lights so I don't get the double chin and all this sort of stuff and, and okay, ready, here I go. And then I did it right here. And so that video was five minutes and this one was two minutes or three minutes. Can you share just a little bit about what the assignment was for this community building? Yeah, it was to make a, I have, I've had several versions of it, but the, the first time it was a three, three minute video introducing yourself. Mm -hmm. So what do you want the rest of your classmates to know about you? And I just found that by doing it in the room, they were more comfortable because it wasn't I'm in front of 300 strangers or however many, in my case, 20 strangers. Mm -hmm. um, they can think about what they have to say instead of just being on the spot. Right. And if they say something that I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have told them about my cat, dead cat or whatever, <laughs> yeah, they can edit, start over again. Uh -huh. And redo that, um, and it's super easy because, like, delete, start right. over again. Okay. They can put together a script, and they can read from the script with the Google Doc right, you know, underneath the camera, so they can, they can get comfortable with it. Uh, and some of them did that, and some of them did not do that. Um, but it was really a, a good way to, uh, for other people to see them in the surroundings. So, you, like, you can pick up the context, you can pick up a person's personality if you see them in the way that they decorate right. their their room. Right. But then it's also, it, and it was more comfortable for them, and it was, it I was just this. relate to them better then, if you see them talking, and the actual person, instead of just their text, you read their text, and you read it to yourself your way. And yeah. And it was, there, there's a big strength in that collective embarrassment <laughs> aspect of it. There really was, because they all had to do it, and so, you know, they all messed up, I messed up, and I messed up on, you know, I modeled messing up. Right. So that they would feel comfortable messing up as well, because um, otherwise I'd never mess up. <laughs> you are perfect, <laughs> but you know I have to do it for them. Um, so it was it was a way to sort of be very informal and very real um, and comfortable with each other, and then they would see each other that way, and you'd always learn something about, mm -hmm. like oh ab about that cat that you talked about in your video. <laughs> Like that's cool. Right. I have a cat too. might be right there. I right. Think. <laughs> right. Doing the, the recording. Right. right. Well, here's a question I have for you, and 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 please redirect me if I'm taking up too much time on this. So, in school of nursing, we did this just this morning. We were talking about an orientation for our incoming mm -hmm. group of students, 152 students, mm -hmm. and we have an online orientation where there's certain information that they get, and then we have a face-to-face. Um, um, orientation where they come and you know they learn about different aspects of the school we have some small group um, activities for them to do to begin to sort of connect and build a sense of community but as as you talked about this I wonder if we can even have them do this prior to right and then kind of watch all of it and then when they come to the face-to-face -face orientation then they already have begin to feel a sense of community because they can recognize you from face to face so based on the stories that they shared and things like that. Yeah, and you know, with 152 of them, they wouldn't remember everybody, right. but they would remember a couple of people and they'd be like, oh, I saw your video, that was really right. cool. I like the poster that you had in the background of, that's my favorite band too, or whatever. Uh -huh. Awesome, I'm gonna so. share that with my team. Well, the way that I had it set up was I had them do an unlisted, uh, what is it called, it's called unlisted number, unlisted URL, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so it, it was not set up as a privacy, like only private only to them, mm -hmm. but it was if you knew the URL, then you could oh, click on it. And I just had them all put a, the URL in a Google Doc, which they all had access, which was embedded within the course site. So it wasn't something that was about and available for anybody. And then furthermore, I said, if you want to, you can, um, and this person actually deleted theirs, immediately after class. <laughs> so if you, if you want to, you can get rid of it. 
a lot of these are still up right now. And like I can go back into the right. sound links and kind of be like, oh yeah. So is this how it appears in these well, or did you no, do I, together? No, each one was individually. I just threw them together to, to sort of show the scale of it. Um, so one of the things that I do want to talk about and have you work on, actually, is are you all familiar with the sharing mechanisms in Google Docs right now? OK. Fantastic. Are you all familiar with how to embed stuff in Google Docs and iframes? In uh, Google Docs, not in Google Docs. Thank you. In D2L. No. OK. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can go through that. Uh, it does work in Moodle. I did not talk about that. I was going to teach my class last fall in Moodle because it was an engineering class and they used Moodle over there. Um, and it was very unintuitive to do it in Moodle, but mm -hmm. I figured out how to do it. It is doable, it's just not as simple. I don't remember exactly how to, but we can figure it out. Okay. So, but the good news is that it is possible. Um, and in Canvas, it's it's also actually not as easy as it I think it should be. But and in some ways, it's actually easier. But there's a strange thing in the differences between. Let me look this up. Um, embedding the documents and linking to the documents. So here I have, you know, it says embed Google Slides, but it's actually not embedding Google Slides. You're just creating a link for Google Slides. You just have to find the link and then you insert the link and it's embedded for Google Docs. You actually have to create that iframe unless they've changed it. I thought we added them the same way. I thought you still had to do create a link, new, create a link. Isn't it like different? So does it make a difference in terms of how you can edit the file? Does that have to do with the difference between Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because, I, because if you embed Google Slides, it's just for students to view, they wouldn't be able to edit it. And you would be able to edit it, right? Or can you? No, you would do both. You can? Okay. Yeah. I just thought we embedded Google Slides and Google Docs the exact same. Oh, wait. No, you're right. Yep, that new create a link. Create a link and, and then paste the, the URL. The slide. Link, yeah. yeah. Um, in news item is where you have to embed it. In the make it an iframe thing. If you're gonna make yes, if you're gonna make it a news item. So the Google Forms, for example. Um, and let's just do that real quick. Would well, you want to do the well, whichever one first? Do you guys have a preference of which one to do? Let's do it. Let's do a news item. So I'm going to go to a new news item. New news item. Oh, yeah. You have, oh, let me check and make sure. None of you were on the RSVP list, so now I have to add you all. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned you all. Um, we have an, in D2L, we have an active teaching lab course, which if you may be in, you may not. I'm really sorry. I was not thinking about it. I will make sure you're all in right now. Yeah, okay, or at least you're already in there. Okay. Oh, you did, did you register today? I thought Sorry. I did. Yeah. Amy, you're in there too. You're going to be in there too. Yep, you're in there. Okay, I lied. Everyone is in there. Whee! So you create a new item. It so you might be not as easy as this. You're right. Um, yeah. It's called Active, it's called Active Teaching, Teaching Lab. Lab, and it's an ongoing one. Well, or it should be listed as an ongoing one. Oh no! Oh no! I wonder if we added you under the wrong email address. Yeah, we had an issue with this last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Amy, I have you as a holodos at DCS. That will save you. Oh, it's at west Amy dot holodos at west. Okay, I apologize. I said holy dust. I said holy dust. Okay, I'm going to add you again. I don't know if I did that. He's 
Oh yeah, to look at the Google Form. So, or at least doesn't have permission to your Google Form, John. But that's one of the things that we were just talking about. With. Okay. We have to make sure you give everybody okay. permission to everything. So, okay. to which Google Form? The one that shows up right at the Today's top. Today's form of the Today's form of the intimidating yeah that way it's like in the course it's not like but it's from the program it's it's from me <laughs> just help me fix it because that we have an issue right now it's like online engagement like everyone's going to the site and they're using the files on there but they're not discussing anything in the site so do you have discussion questions for them in the forum um not really because I I'm not an environmental conservation expert so uh -huh. <laughs> I'd have to get the program to write those, mm -hmm. but um, one of the students just to discuss, but I don't know. That's yeah, I've just question. found that when you don't do it in a formal way by putting questions for them, they don't necessarily take the initiative to kind of do that discussion mm -hmm. on their own. Very true. Yeah. Okay, Amy, I tried adding you again, and it didn't work. And I, it may be because your name is already in the course, and so it can't find you as an external course person. Are you, am I so in there as an instructor? You should be in there as a student. Oh, maybe that's my problem. Are you logged in right now as an instructor? Well, I have to switch my role. Oh, oh here it is. Active teaching it. Lab. You got it. Okay, great. So in my case, John's working on permission for me, right? He's got me right. right somewhere. Are you just going to make it open to everyone? Well, so everyone with the link? I think hit refresh and try it again. Is I actually lost that form. I did not remember. I must have created it with a different account. Oh, so really? I, I created that form yesterday. You created that form yesterday? <laughs> That's why it's not my form. <laughs> See, I never mess up. Of course not. <laughs> Who would ever think that? Okay, so what were you going to show us? You were going to show us how to. Have... So I was going to show you the news item, and if I click on a new item, this is, this is where you actually have to do a, a, um, an iframe. Which okay, you already lost me. How do you get to that new news item spot? Thank you. Can we not add new item if we're not instructors? Oh. You, can, you can only add a news item if you are an instructor of the course. Shall I change everyone to instructors? Sure. I will change everyone to instructors. Please hold. <laughs> <laughs> and John can show you in really slow motion how to do it. And by the time he shows you, I will have changed you all to instructor. Action for new. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the new news item. Yeah, it's very user friendly. Very okay, I just made you an instructor. Now I gotta find Amy. John, the news item. Okay, hold on. We got. Let me get Amy and release in there as instructors really quick here. Sorry, it'll take me like six more clicks. This is actually not on this, but it is on it our formative feedback handout. It is on there. It is on this? Mm -hmm. How to do an iframe? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yes. It is. It's the medium. I think I did that. Embed <laughs> as a news item in a Google form for formative feedback of today's class. Of First of all, you did this. Yeah. That's why I made that form. Good job, Amy. <laughs> nice job, Amy. Okay, everybody should be instructors now. Yep. I'm so good. go ahead and tell us how to do that again, John. All right. You can follow along <laughs> right here. Does everybody have a Do you I want me to create one. my own? Because I'm already in. Do it. 
Do we the headline? What should be the headline? Oh. Uh, yes, you could do that. It's All actually bagels to today. embed any document as a news item. So it's not just a form. It could be, so what I am going to do is I'm just going to take the activity sheet, which I have open. Uh, but it could be any Google Doc. Okay. As long as you have the appropriate permissions shared, then your students will be able to see it. Right. Sharing a private Google Doc doesn't do anybody any good. Right. So when you're in the Google Doc, you want to go to sharing and so when you're in a Google Doc, yes, it drops down. Can you change sharing? As the instructor who owns the Google Doc, can you change the sharing from within the iframe? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, cool. But, make it smaller. So, right now it's set up so that anyone's link can view. You can also set it so that the Google people at UW Madison Google Apps can view. I like to not do that because some people do not use their Wisc.edu Google account, and they are then they always send me emails saying please communicate with me. Right, it's not working. So I figured that because it's in the learning management system, that it's already passed one level of security. of security, and it's okay that anybody then who has that can can see it. Because if you split it to reading relevant link, you can make comments. So good, yes. So anyone with a link can view. Um, is, uh, yes, then I click on more. And here is where we can actually change it so that anyone with a link can edit, can comment, or can view. So it's a two step sort of process. And it can get even more complicated than that because we hit OK here. And then we click on advanced. And now we can say, all right, I want to add individual people specifically, like Ian or, um, and I do have your WISC account. Yeah. But, and then I can set that up so that you can do these things. I can also change the oh, change change it so that it expires. So that at the end of the class, if you have some TAs and you want them to no longer have access at the end of the semester, you can go in and remember to change that at the end of the semester, or you can just say, it expires, make sure you which is kind of a fun way of doing that. I just created one. Can you see my news? YouTube for community building. Is that it? Yep, that's me. All right. <laughs> it works. So that's a news item. Nice job. YouTube for community building. Now, I'd like you to also uh -huh. embed uh -huh. a Google Doc now. Well, we have instructions here. Embed a Google Doc. The very first one. And it even says Nelson easy at the top. Okay. Location, so and the time to location. Okay, so flip it over. Flip over your sheet. You're wrong. Okay. Thank you. So under, under materials. Uh -huh. That's what you're going to do. Yeah, that was awesome. Right <laughs> <laughs> we make them very step by step. Use this course okay. just as a demo under thing. Right? That was from last year. Go to yeah. content. Okay. okay. But okay. Content. <laughs> you you did it. it! Yeah. So I got the content. Actually, I'm going to stick you in this. Just oh, so we were in the wrong module. So for the video and takeaways oh, that's what pages, is there anything you're just embedding a, a web page? Yeah. You know, like if you go into content, then it's like a video and takeaway. And these all, these all three you're just doing like this is so just materials, a content, web page in a frame. That is just a web page in an iframe. Yep. Folder to a okay. Sponsor. And this is just a link. To right? embed it, what do you guys need to embed it? Well, this yes. is this is um, the link that it's going to embed it. So try to actually. Yeah. We just gave you a link. So let's close that out. And scroll to the top. If I do it here, it's the same thing. You should be able to. This is a news item. Yeah. Click on edit. And that's different from course content. Because course content is embedded in a, or not embedded, is the wrong word. Course content is in a module. Right, so in a module, or so. As a content yeah, module, but try that. all you have to do is so add a link, create uh, link. Sure, if you want to. So that's the super easy step. That's that's this, this, and yeah, this. Yes, mm -hmm. pick any of these you want to do. If you want to do this one, do that one. It's totally fine. Oh. 
<laughs> and it used to be that you had to create your own iframe right. and set up Any the width and the height of it and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Sure. Yes. But they've made that so easy. That's what step two is. So the only place that you have to create an iframe for now create is in the news items for some reason. Start off actually the release by adding a uh, content at the top of the top of the page. Add a Google Doc as a content page. Right. That's what so we're doing right now. All right. I, but I think this is an issue with my iPad. It won't let me type anything. Anymore. Well, you're not. You're not trying to type. It. You want to. Oh, wait. What? Yeah, it's coming from. No. Oh, yep. It's in the. Um, well, we have a problem. It's in. Just in. <laughs> Well, not letting me do anything. Maybe, so maybe well. let it think for a minute yeah. and it'll catch up eventually. Oh, oh there you go. Sweet. Alright, so I was, my, I was going to put the title YouTube link, right? And then in here I want to put a link as to how they can get to. Sure, so yeah, so YouTube. these instructions, yeah, you can put any kind of a link in there. Mm -hmm. So these instructions are, are Directing you to link to another Google Doc. Oh, that, that you but guys you don't have, have here. To, okay, yeah. no, so no, no, no. Let's go. So that. I'm going to yeah. just put paste URL. So what title should I give this? Um, be creative. Releases practice embedding. <laughs> That's super creative, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So you can, when you create a question in the form, can, you can make a require? Oh, yes, in Google Forms, you can. Yep. Just for it, release, releases embedment. How about that? <laughs> 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 All right, so <laughs> the owner of the edit rights lets you, as the owner, access it, right? It should be John. But check this out. If you're sharing privileges, I think I went through this, yeah. mm -hmm. um, then your students aren't going to be able to see it, so you've got to send it to, to that. Um, and you set it through the advanced, right? And you get to the Click on this, and I like to do the ending with the link can. Well, you don't have to go through advanced. You can just sit, click on the other thing. And then click on more, and anyone can view, comment, or edit, yep. but then get to this point. If it's set up so that regarding John can only view, and I'm not logged in as John Martin had with study to you as edit rights, right. um, then I this is all I can see. It's a very short list of options here. Mm -hmm. This is what I found out today. If you have it set up so that anyone can comment, this is kind of an amazing thing for me. It used to be that all you had up here was insert comment was the only thing that showed up. And they changed it. Mm -hmm. So now you see everything here. And I was freaking out earlier going, Wait a second, how come it's letting me make all these edit things? When you were logged in as regarding John? When I was logged in as regarding John. And I took those, pro I explicitly unshared regarding John to try it out. So what it does is it lets me only make suggestions. So I see everything. I can make all of these suggestions, but they don't actually affect anything. As the administrator or the editor, the owner, I will, John Martin at Whisk, I will be able to see that regarding John made these suggestions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mess anything up. If you logged in and you saw it, you would not see any of the suggestions that regarding John made. Right. So regarding John can still also make add comments, but the comments can only be seen by regarding John or can be seen by everyone. I think that the comments are suggestions only different than comments. Yes. Yes. So this is this is another thing they added. Oh, wow. uh, six oh, months wow. ago, a couple of months ago, yeah. Really? Cool. This option between you can make, you can only do it, you can s make um, edits, or you can make suggestions. And if you make suggestions, it's like um, tracking in Microsoft yeah. Word, mm -hmm. where it says, I don't want to use Robust anymore, I want to use Powerful Sharing System as its strongest, biggest, you know, you can change these words around. And it makes it look ugly. But I can totally see the use of this. If I wanted input from multiple people on something, I could set up commenting rights. And you could all give me comments. But I would see that, oh, this is definitely a problem here, this word, because all of you said it instead of one person said it and the other person said, oh, you can count that already. I don't have to. 
like it might that way it, there's kind of a voting like if if all three of you said that this was a problem. Independently without, because we can't see each other's comments. Exactly. Then I'd be like, this is definitely a problem. If you again said it, and you were like, ah, you again said it, so I don't have to, I might be like, ah, yeah, it doesn't count. I don't have to listen to her. So it, it, it's good that I think that that can be. Oh my gosh, this is so but This is great if students are working on a, on a project as a group that they can work on without her. Well, Google Collaborative Tools are fantastic yes. as a group. Mm -hmm. They would all have editing rights, mm -hmm. so they would be able to, and even if you all have editing rights, you can choose to be like, all right, you're going to be the one who makes the final decisions, right. mm -hmm. but the rest of us can all make suggestions, mm -hmm. and then if you like the suggestion, you just hit the little check mark. If you don't want the suggestion, you can hit the X. What I do is I reply, I don't make your suggestion, or. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to do it this other way because, and then I hit the X and dismiss it. Okay. So you that put a little bit that. of an explanation as to why you don't like right. it. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's 4 o'clock. It's 4 o'clock. That was fast. How did that go? Um, did we learn anything at all today? Did we figure any problems out? Like, it's complicated. Embedding stuff in D2L is complicated, period. Iframes are complicated. When they figure out, oh, we're going to make it easy and just have a link. That gets complicated because sometimes you can't do it, it works one way and sometimes it works the other way. And some things you can do a bit and other things you can't do a yeah. bitly. So yeah, there are complications. But once, so I put my assignments and my course schedule on in Google Docs, and for me, I can make last minute changes, and it all works out beautifully. Now, how do the students feel about you making last minute changes? Because the course is set up mm -hmm. as a um, formative and ever-changing course from oh, the beginning, okay. um, I tell them that you know if something amazing happens in the middle of the semester, mm -hmm. we have the flexibility to address that. Okay. If if you guys are not getting what we're covering in week three, we can make it happen in week four as well. Okay. So it's not as rigid of a schedule right. just by the nature so of the courses that I'm talking. Um, they would probably not be notified automatically. So, like, say, like, you know, some students already view the syllabus, and some some major change was done to the syllabus. You had to make an announcement to draw their attention to the question. Yes. Oh, so what's so? Um, you probably said this already, but what's your experience doing that with the syllabus? Do you let them comment? I do let them comment, although they often do not. Um, I've had. Do you find it helpful to let them comment? Yeah. I've had three people comment, and the comments that generally the people won't comment because if I don't comment, then I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> but if they do comment, then they're the ones that are most um, interested, and they're the ones that also are, um, well, it gives me a chance to, it's a chance for me to talk to the students, mm -hmm. basically. And any interaction that I can have with students helps us build that. Do they, do they take advantage of that and use that as a way to ask you questions about the syllabus? Um, I've only had like three comments, and they were all really good comments like uh, that I had like the date wrong or something like oh. that. So it was you know, mistakes that I might not have caught, mm -hmm. and they were able to fix it. Um, there was one um, where they talked about I often give very vague assignments because I want them to sort of up, um, upsell it to themselves mm -hmm. and, and make it harder than it is. And so there was one where they were like, so what are the requirements? You know, like it was a question about minimum requirements. And I was like, I had to respond, well, what do you, what do you think is appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was up to them. I put it back on them. Somebody commented, everybody would got the chance to see the comment. Have you notified other comments? I don't know. Is it, is it just depend on their setting? Do they notify you? I do not know if 
as a, I imagine that if you are a commenter, and it's not an anonymous comment, if you have a mm -hmm. login comment, and somebody responds to your comment, that I get that, but I'm always the edit, I'm always able to edit, I think. So I don't know if I have any experience where I only have comment from the disk. Yeah. Your other question is about forms. Did you see it? Did you see the see the summary of reports? Yes. So I could I could look it in here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can also I can probably like go to Excel. Yep. Do it. Instead. Or do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It lots. Click click on so that one. You have four responses. Yeah. So you open it up in sheets. Okay, great. And then under uh, form, I believe there's an option called view summary. Show summary of responses. And this is cool because oh. this gives you, depending on your question, it'll be like a pie chart or a graph bar chart. Um, if you have, so there you go, 100%, there you go, all these different. So it's basically the reports to give to the instructor then, like they can just see this. You, I have done in the past copy and paste of, you know, screenshots of this, and that way I don't have to build my own graphs in Excel. I don't have to do any. Well, can I just share this directly yeah. with the instructor? Yeah. Uh, yep. You can. So if you look at the activity sheet for the um, formative feedback one. Is it on the page? On it the is page? on the page. So I guess my question was actually what should I share with the instructor? Because I wanted to collect the, the net ID to know which student has filled out the, the email. Sorry. But I don't, I it's supposed to be anonymous, so we don't want the instructor seeing their report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just want to make sure that's the final thing. So. Um, like, okay, so like in the form itself, when I look at the responses, yep. it's, it has this, who has responded. Okay. Which I don't see in a way I could get rid of this. So maybe I shouldn't share them with the form itself, I should share them to Excel, the sheet, and then... In the Excel, the and then if you hid the column that has who they are, mm -hmm. as an administrator, you could do that.